Hi folks, I have here, that is here, a process calibrator for temperature, voltage, milliamps and uh, pressure. And that is uh, not working anymore. Uh, if it fires on, powers on, then the only way to put it out, uh, out again is uh, switched off is to remove the battery. And that is not very uh, handy. Things I noticed uh, at first, uh, I will show it there, it's a bit easier. First thing I noticed uh, was that the cabinet is not uh, closed there, like there's something in between, and it makes some noise that it should not do. It's a General Electric uh, model DPI620G. How it works, I have no clue, I only have to repair it. So first thing we do is uh, open it and look inside what you find. I will do that off camera, because otherwise it's a bit... So it's open and this is the battery that's in it. It wants to come out. No. Uh, 3.7 volts LiPo. So. It's the battery case, not much to see, so we go uh, deeper by removing all the screws again. We can do some fast forward. Um, measurement receiver, and that was uh, about 100 screws in the RF, RF department. And it took me almost uh, 15 minutes to get them all out. Oh, from those very very small uh, things. Now before I open it, put on my strap to be anesthetic because these are pretty expensive things and you don't want to make them worse as they are. And screws. Is a left on. I got them all. And this is a, don't forget to place it after repair. And this is the inside of uh, of this thing. This is not a good sign. <laughs> so here we have the problem for the power supply. Why it won't work on the power supply? And this is the connector. Uh, that is uh, floating around and there are some pieces of PCB left. I don't know if you can see it. It's a bit dark. But uh, there are pieces of uh, PCB on the connector. That's not a good situation. Now first I have to uh, unlock the connector. Like that, and then we can disconnect that, and we can disconnect this, and then we have here one left, and it's under the both halves, so that is not very handy. Now where do we expect the? Oh, this is the place the power supply connector is uh, missing, but that is not. Uh, too much damage, damage, I think. Oh, there it is. All, all the, the pads are gone, so I have to make uh, new pads for that. Uh, that is no problem. That's uh, also nice to to see, maybe. But first, I will uh, get it, uh, get the PCB out of it. So the board is out, and I found the reason why the cabinet was not uh, closed like it should be. The antenna wire, I think this thing is Bluetooth or, or Wi Fi, probably Wi Fi. So. Uh, and uh, the antenna is broken inside because I see the end of the, the metal and it is, uh, or yeah, it, it is completely uh, uh, broken. So it has to make a new antenna for it. I think I have those, this kind of wire, and it, it is no, not coaxial, so to see. I will look that later. That's uh, the second problem. And here we have the 
the rest of the, the thing and then we have to replace the uh, power supply connector and that was in uh, in this case better zoom in uh, and I'm in the light <laughs> Damn. I mean the <laughs> look in not straight the, the display of the camera is in is mirrored but here you see the uh, here you can see it this one this is where the connector should be and this part the gray part is missing and uh, in on the other side uh, here is also a part missing so that has to be fixed and then the next step will uh, to power it up and uh, look why it won't stop if you use the power switch so there was probably some voltage uh, monitor or something like that and then uh, we look at it uh, when it's working again uh, there's no service documentation of this uh, thing the manufacturer don't want you to repair it they want you to throw it away and buy a new one uh, too bad for him that I most times repair them. So, uh, I will uh, first uh, take some stuff uh, to make the the connection and then we can feed it from uh, a lab supply and uh, do some measurements because uh, it's always uh, tricky to do this uh, using the internal battery because they can deliver a lot of current you don't know if it is protected, the power supply inside is protected and uh, if you make some mistake you don't want to uh, get the holy smoke out so uh, first thing first this is how the uh, solder pads from the uh, power supply input looked like I uh, desoldered the parts that were under the connector and put them back in place so this is what I have to rebuild and we have one piece there too uh, what makes it a bit easier I was afraid it was uh, switched and then you get all kinds of uh, separate parts but if you look here and there those are two solder joints but this is one huge copper surface and the vias go down to the other side and there's the, the rest of the input so this is just one a flake of copper and the same goes for that side so that makes it more easy to repair because there is uh, some more meat to uh, to hold it normally i would uh, drill new holes and place new vias but i can't find out if this is a two layer or multi layer board and I don't like to uh, uh, break some via connection inside the board so I think I will uh, do it from the outside or just make some uh, with some epoxy well down the uh, glue down the connector as an extra so they can't uh, pull it loss uh, off again and this is uh, a drawing of the situation so this is one uh, connector and that, that is one connector uh, there is a switch inside the connector there but they don't use it so I have to remake these two parts if you need some copper there is a very uh, easy way to get it uh, and a not so easy way the not so easy is to uh, kill uh, Lipo battery in 18151 is the number I think they have copper inside it and you can roll it out but uh, it's a lot of chemicals and this is the easier way just take some old copper clad, take a burner burn it until you see some ripples coming in the in the copper so you know the, the glue is loose and you see you can uh, pull some copper off and that way you, you have nice uh, stable copper in the right size uh, compared to the 
uh, the, the copper that's on the PCB you have. Don't do what I do, I have uh, rather uh, heat resistant fingers, but it, it can be hot. Uh, of the heat goes most into this and this is uh, is not too hot but don't do this at home only for your own risk but uh, this way uh, the best thing to do is outside or under some fuming hood because it, uh, the smoke uh, from the, the glue is uh, not uh, very nice smelling so I made uh, two strips this one I uh, soldered to the back because most of the pad here was still intact, only this, this small corner, so I won't glue that. I have soldered it over the whole range and I will glue the adapt the connector. This one is, uh, I left a little piece of the copper above the vias and I made a whole new uh, copper pad for this and I will glue this with epoxy. First I'm going to do some masking tape over it so they keep clean and when everything is dry I can just cut it away and uh, then I can solder. The glue I, I use is uh, heat resistance but you must solder always very quick with most glues because they uh, uh, even epoxy they uh, tend to uh, uh, come loose again or become soft. Uh, I have one uh, that is very strong but it is much too thick for for this so I will use some uh, other one for that but first I will uh, prepare it. So I masked uh, both uh, uh, pieces of PCB so the uh, PCB itself uh, around the pads will be free of glue and I cut out the room for the for this one because this is the one we're going to glue. I fold it a little bit over and we're going to do some glue under there and uh, the, the rest, the other one is completely holded by the solder and uh, about the epoxy that I will do over it when it's soldered down to, uh, to get it better to the board and that's why I leave it also clean there in the middle. I don't, you don't want uh, epoxy on the pads because then after a while Afterwards you have to remove that and by that you maybe damage the, uh, the, the pads again, so that's not what you want. So I stripped the, the coax from the antenna cable that was uh, broken and I glued the centers together so it's now uh, about uh, half a millimeter or a millimeter shorter as it was. Uh, the first thing I do then is I have very thin shrink wrap here that is going over the inner side and then I have a longer piece that I'm going to uh, connect over the other side but I will do that on a microscope because I want to be sure there is no uh, strands uh, <coughs> between the isolations and I have to use my hot so uh, my, my hot air to uh, to melt it and it makes an awful, awful lot of noise. So I will do that off camera. So this is a close-up picture of the the kernel of the the center con conductor of the coax. It's uh, less than a millimeter thick. If I hold uh, my scalpel to it, the tip of my scalpel, you can see how small it is. So the next step. And here you see the result, uh, the microscope is a bit too, uh, too, too much uh, amplification for this, but you can see the, the concept. Uh, I've uh, connected the, the piece of copper you see under the tubing to the uh, shrink that is around the, the coax, so it is uh, again uh, a transmission line it's the the shielding is not uh, uh, discontinued it is uh, just one pine now with copper foil around it to to shield it and then some shrink a third wrap shrink wrap around it and this way uh, 
it should be uh, almost as good as uh, as new. I don't think the the one millimeter make a difference because the antenna is inside the cabinet. This is not the antenna. This is a lonely coax. Coax will transform uh, impedance, but in that case the antenna is not 50 ohm already and I used the cable to, imp to to transfer that and you can never transfer that way to 50 uh, ohms so always to another but there is no uh, uh, data on this cable or on the Z antenna so if I would have bought or had to buy another one it was difficult to find one too Should me I can measure it with my VNA probably uh, but then I have the, the strange connectors because if I make another connection then it's still uh, something else again so this will be good. It will always be better as it was. And we have another problem. This is the battery here that is inside it. And if I measure the voltage on it then it reads 0 0.0, 0, 0 volts like you see on the meter there. This one. So, that is a problem. I think the protection circuit, circuit uh, jumped in. Sometimes it uh, helps if you then uh, uh, apply a voltage to it and uh, limit it in current and get the, the cell above the, uh, the voltage where the protection kicks in. Because we measure zero volt but does not uh, mean per se that it is also zero volt can be that the protection circuit if it has one uh, kicked in if it has not then the problem will be the the battery itself so I have here it looks like multimeter probes in your right these are four wire probes so I put them to my uh, power supply up there this one and that has uh, I set the offset. That is not the thing I wanted. Reset. Okay, uh, that will read uh, read back. It has a sense line, so I can see what the voltage is doing, what the current is doing. So I will uh, try this and look what happens. It uh, I've put it at uh, two point one amps. It is 200 milliamps and it's now reading 2.9 volts so it is in in indeed not that it is probably just uh, the protection uh, and because I apply voltage to it the protection is powered on and thinks the battery is uh, running again uh, at least sometimes you, you never know what's inside it and then uh, I can uh, uh, you must not do that very long, uh, only only a few minutes or so. If if it doesn't work, then now you see the the voltage has kicked. The, the it, it has helped because now the battery is at a 2.83 volts, and the the circuit, the protection circuit, is awakened again. So nice. Uh, tip: If you have problems with that, but always be very very careful with uh, Leon and Lipa batteries because they are little bombs they can become unstable so don't go zapping them or, or try uh, large currents just like you can do with Nikots or so to burn away some of the crystals in this case just gentle a few like 200 milliamps or 100 milliamps just enough to, to to fool the protection circuit and if that works you, you saw how quick that this worked then there's no problem it was just uh, fall asleep like they call it if you want to know more more about this there's a very good uh, website and it's called batteryuniversity.com and uh, you can find uh, more about this uh, technique there and it's called waking up a uh, uh, Leon battery so hope you uh, can do something with that. Uh, there are already enough dead batteries on the world. So this is the, the end result of the the pad. Uh, here is the I call it the connector, the input uh, part of the connector. And it uh, I have to solder it onto there back onto there. 
and uh, but for that I first uh, have to uh, wait until the glue uh, gets hot, the epoxy gets hard, because the epoxy I used, uh, the one you saw, that was yesterday, it was dried up nice, but the copper was just uh, not stuck to it. Uh, I had it in a clamp, but I don't know what, so I have made new, a new copper part and uh, scratched it very clean on the back side and now I used Araldit that is a, a white uh, something hard, a better epoxy for this kind of things that stuck to almost everything but it is uh, very thick so it was not easy to uh, apply but the result is, uh, is good enough, it is not uh, some piece of art, but it is uh, sturdy and uh, it will do and then the, after I, I place that uh, connector then I uh, think that I will uh, put some epoxy uh, behind it uh, to make a sort of a dam that uh, if they put too, too much pressure on the, uh, the contact that it uh, will stay on the board uh, because if I glue it completely if this one uh, dies someday then it's not replaceable anymore uh, so that is a bit of a risk and on this one I also find a problem the power switch wasn't working uh, they had to uh, switch it off with the by removing the battery and uh, so I looked at the input switch this is this one and as I was pushing the button the sometimes it uh, activated the switch but most times not because the the distance I think maybe the rubber is worn or they just had too much uh, free play when mounting it uh, there are some holes under the switch and that makes it very hard to uh, replace them of to, to uh, put it in another position so I mounted a small resistor, an SMD resistor on the top of the switch with a little crazy glue and now it is just it, it, it's almost touching the rubber on the picture it looks like it touches it but it, there's still something like 0.1 millimeter space and now uh, it is no problem I think you hear it uh, to uh, operate the switch so hopefully that was the problem with the with the on and off switching and not some electronic problem here in the in the PCB because all the uh, it's not good to see on this PCB but it is better to see on this one you see all the shining coating there is some very hard uh, conformal coating over the board and uh, that is normally uh, I, I use a scalpel and I scrape it away and it's no problem but here uh, and, and that was thinner as this one even uh, here I had to uh, put some really some force into it and took a fair bit amount of sh scraping before I got it uh, free I had to do it also on the on this side of the board this is where the uh, switches come the the input connectors coming I had put some the wires through the vias and I had to scrape some board off here and it is very uh, was very hard and one problem I found here in this one too there is a, a very sm small capacitor there that's 0.6 millimeters long and uh, that was uh, uh, broken there was a chip off so I don't think that that will uh, cause the problem but I don't know the function of it is it some kind of anti -den anti dender thing then it uh, debounces then it uh, could cause 
uh, this problem but we will see uh, after uh, I put everything back together again uh, tomorrow I will solder the connector to it uh, so then the glue will be uh, hardened and then uh, we will try so everything is done and it's uh, back together again uh, things you always have to be careful is with these little connectors you have to uh, whip it up and then insert the the cable and then push it down again never use force uh, if you if you're in doubt take a microscope or a big lens uh, loop and look how the construction works because other if you break them you are have a hell of a job replacing them because the pitch is very small and you have to find the connectors uh, just to, about to power it up uh, that's all to make that a bit more easy I work with sort of systems this is standard going to my uh, one of my power supplies uh, this is uh, an uh, USB adapter because I had this set that was once with a uh, solar channel uh, uh, charger and there's a lot of uh, connectors for it in here <coughs> all kinds of connectors you can stuck uh, st stick stick on this uh, cable and so I can power all kind of uh, portable gear without using the battery uh, if I'm afraid that uh, some short will happen if I put it at 5 volts it is there always be careful and check if the voltage is right and if the connection is right because you have a problem if it is one of those uh, things that is uh, working just the opposite way mm. so all kinds of uh, cables hanging in front of my meter as always so uh, it needs 5 volt and it needs the, the zero in the middle and it needs the plus on the side so now my meter is reading plus 5 volts so that is correct I'm just over 5 volts doesn't matter that much and I can inject it next, next check is to see what the voltage is do the, the current is doing I've got that on that a little bit too stiff to turn around it's too uh, shiny to read I think ah, it is readable it's drawing uh, 690 milliamps and uh, there's no service documentation about this thing just that makes it a little bit harder but I found a brochure uh, that we can use for that and it was this is the paper. No, the right paper is not here. Is it this one, I think, yeah. It uh, will work 12 hours on a on a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So that implies that it should run uh, uh, around 420 milliamps, and that's a lot less. But they say you have to charge it if it's empty at 6.5 hours, and that would imply it is drawing 760 milliamps so that 680 can be right because I just inserted things and the battery was completely empty as you know <coughs> standby on the on the battery uh, charger it would idle around 710 milliamps they say and this is the situation here uh, it is running uh, it's not powered on and it's running on the battery uh, charger and I don't know how accu accurate those numbers uh, are but 7 on millivolt milliamps can be the right thing and uh, I can check if there are some 
hot spots. I don't smell anything. It's always a good sign. And I look at the meter. It's all around 20 degrees, like it is in here. No, nothing uh, hot there, so that's a good sign. On back because otherwise I can't find it the next time. So now we're going to a closer. Uh, be careful with these kind of things that the rubber seal is everywhere embedded uh, the right way. That something like the antenna cable is not uh, jammed between it, and these sort of cables are uh, free, so you don't damage anything. If you put it together, I will disconnect the power. Uh, always be sure that it, it sits flush. If it's somewhere not flush and you have to uh, use force for it, then open it again and check if there is not something jammed between the cabinet. Because I see so often damage caused by these kind of actions from people. And that's a lot of work that was not necessary. Okay, I will uh, close it up and screw it uh, uh, at least with, with some screws. I rather uh, lose the screws if it's necessary, as that I uh, break something because the, the halves collapse or something like that. So now the test, will it uh, go on? I think so. It starts booting. The text uh, here on, on the thing is, it says there is no thermo uh, couple. I don't know what they mean by that. It's probably some number from the, the owner. And only relative pressure measurements I have no clue why they said it, but it's in Dutch, so I can translate it for you. It says pling, it sounds like Windows, but it is also running on Windows. And it's booting just as slow as Windows is. And now we will look if that everything is okay. Uh, calibrate, I think that will be the one I need. Channel 1. And then we say, let's say 3 volts. And if I then look at my Keatley, that is over there. Then we see it is 3.10000 volts. So that is uh, nice to know that's okay. Uh, I don't check every every uh, thing. Uh, I just wanted to know if it works again because the owner of this, uh, the the not the owner, the one for I'm repa repairing this is a calibration lab, so they are capable of calibrating it uh, themselves. But it's nice to know that it works. The big question, however, was uh, does it go off? And then we get uitschakel and uitschakel. Uh, that means a switch of in English. So there were the switch of possibilities. You can get it in uh, standby too. And now it's switch off. So I'm happy it is working again. Hope you liked it. If not, bad luck. If so, give me a thumbs up if you want. And uh, I hope to see you on the next movie <laughs> video. Okay, bye bye.